So far, we've been discussing inference for the sample average Schumann fact, or SAIT. Here, we're going to um, turn our attention to the inference for population average Schumann fact, or PATE. Okay. What we're going to do is to assume, in addition to randomization of the Schumann Schumann, we're going to assume that we have simple random sample from a superpopulation. So superpopulation refers to a population, hypothetical population of infinite size. Okay, so suppose we first sim simple random sampling, do a simple random sampling from a superpopulation and get n units, and then conduct a random treatment assignment among these units. Okay, so we just basically added the random sampling step before conducting the randomized experiment. By making sure that the sample you have is representative of the population, target population, we can make inference about average human effect in the population. So instead of just asking what would happen if everybody gets everybody in my sample gets a treatment versus nobody gets a treatment uh, in, in my sample, we can say what would happen if we implement administer this treatment to everybody in the population uh, compared to nobody gets this treatment in the population. So that's a population inference. We can use the some experiment we conducted on the sample to infer about population so long as um, the sample is representative of the population. So we have, if we assume simple random sampling, then we can um, we can make that assumption. Okay. So first thing we can show, uh, like I we did before, is to show unbiasedness. Now here it's. It's there are two steps, right? So we have over repeated sampling, simple random sampling, and then we have uh, Chima assignment uh, that's also random randomization. Okay. So here the hypothetical scenario is suppose we first simple random sample from population and then conduct random assignment of the Chima and then compute the difference means estimator and repeat this process many, many times. So each time we'll have different sample and we'll have different units being assigned to the treatment and we can compute the slightly different um, difference in means estimate and we repeat this uh, process hypothetically over and over. And if we take the average of all those different estimates, then that average is gonna be exactly the same as population average treatment effect, which is defined as expectation of the difference between y of one, y of zero. How does that do? Math how does that work mathematically? Well, you can simply apply the law of iterative expectation. What's interesting here is that in the inner expectation is uh, with respect to the treatment assignment. So this is exactly what we did before, where we show that that this inner uh, expectation. Um, the conditional expectation equal to the sample average stream fact. Okay? And the outer expectation is over the random sampling of units. Right? The sample is representative of the population, so sample average is an is a unbiased estimate of the population average. So that's why the expectation of the state equals to pit, uh, population average stream fact. So, the, mathematically, you can also see these two steps. So the first step is um, taking the expectation over randomized chain assignment, and then the second step is taking the expectation over random sampling. So those two randomness um, characterizes this unbiasedness property. We can do the variance uh, in the same way. We can proceed in the same fashion to show that the variance of tau hat um, is equal to actually the um, usual variance estimator, sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 0 squared over n0, where sigma um, 1 squared is a population variance of y1, and sigma 0 squared is a population variance of y0. Okay, so this is, um, and we estimate this, so we had, previously we had sigma 1 squared hat using a sample to estimate the population variance. Uh, potential outcomes. Okay, so it turns out that the, for the inference for the population average stream effect, the usual variance um, is the unbiased estimate of the, the, the right quantity, the exact variance, not the conservative 
um, estimate. Okay, so how do we go from the, uh, the variance of tau hat using the previous results? Well, we can use this low total variance formula. Okay, so this is the usual uh, low total variance formula where the marginal variance equals to the variance of conditional expectation plus um, expectation of conditional variance. And each of these terms so the, uh, can be, uh, can be um, computed using the previous results, right? So we have expected, uh, expected value of tau hat given um, potential outcomes, which was the state. And then we also already um, given, we also already given the conditional variance of tau hat uh, given the potential outcomes. Okay? So this expression you can plug it in and then do manipulation to arrive at this um, expression of the variance. And as, a, as, we, uh, as we saw before in the, in the application, the usual variance estimator is actually turns out to be unbiased um, for the, uh, the pop variance of the, for the population average stream effect, okay? Um, so for the sample average stream effect, it's conservative. It, the variance is a little larger than necessary, but for the population of extreme effect, it's exactly unbiased. Um, so expected value of estimated variance is equal to the actual variance. This makes sense because the random sampling um, adds the extra variability. So the, uh, the, the, the variance for the pate is bigger than the variance for the state. Uh, we've, we've seen that how to derive the variance um, for an expecta expectation and the variance uh, for the sample and the population average stream effect. But in order to construct uh, the confidence intervals, the variance, it, knowing just the variance is, it alone is insufficient, right? We have to have a um, distribution, fortunately, uh, without further assumptions, uh, we will not be able to derive the exact distribution. Could that requires the knowledge of the distribution of the um, potential outcomes. So here we're going to focus on asymptotic inference as, um, as in, in many statistical analysis. Uh, so asymptotic inference works as a sample size goes to infinity. And in this uh, randomized experiment, we can keep the uh, proportion of the treated unit and the control unit constant. So here the k is defined as n1 over n, which is a proportion of the uh, trimming, uh, trimming group. Okay, so we're going to keep that constant and the red the sample size uh, increase, which means that the trimming group size is going to be also increasing at the same rate as the sample size. Okay, once we assume this, we can write the difference means estimator tau hat as basically the sample average. So one over n uh, sum of this uh, quantity where k is held constant. So you can see it, it becomes a sample average quantity, sample average of this um, ti times y of one and the y, one minus ti y of zero divided by the, uh, this k and one minus k term. So for PATE, uh, once we express the difference means as a sample average, then we can um, prove the consistency by low of large numbers, usual low of large numbers, and then we can also um, uh, obtain the asymptotic normality using the central limit theorem. Uh, <clears throat> now for the sample uh, average stream, in fact, we can also do something similar. There is something called the finite population central limit theorem, which is basically what you imagine is that you have a sample average stream effect and the sample size grows. Okay, so the sample average stream effect, that's your target uh, uh, estimate, that also grows as the sample size grows. And then the question is how, um, how the difference between your estimate, difference means estimate and the sample average stream effect uh, how, how difference between those two quantities behave. And we can show, um, just like the population average stream effect case, if you divide um, the difference by the star error, then that converges to the in distribution, uh, normal uh, mean zero and the binance one.
Okay, so there is sort of analogous um, asymptotic regime where you contemplate the sample going to infinity, and for each each sort of growing sample, you have sample average streaming effect as the true value, and then you look at you characterize the difference between your estimate and then the true value of safety. Okay. And um, so that's basically whether it's a population average streaming effect or sample average streaming effect, you'll be using this type of normal approximation uh, to conduct, construct the, central, uh, the confidence intervals. So either way, we'll um, obtain the confidence intervals by computing the standard errors and then multiplying that by critical values and adding and subtracting uh, to the point estimate to obtain the usual confidence intervals. Okay. So um, to summarize, so we so far we've looked at this Neyman's analysis, which contrasts with the Fisher's permutation test and permutation inference we looked at um, previously. So like Fisher's permutation inference, the Neyman proposed randomization based inference. So he only used the fact that the researcher randomized the treatment assignment. And for the case of population average treatment effect, researchers actually run, did the random sampling, used those acts of randomization as a basis of inference. If you recall, uh, there are two limitations of Fisher's permutation inference we discussed previously. The first was causal heterogeneity. Um, it was easy to conduct uh, null hypothesis of no sharp null hypothesis of no effect testing that null hypothesis, but it was dif difficult to accommodate the heterogeneity. When we did when we inverted the permutation test, we often um, had to assume a simple model such as constant additive treatment effect, which assumes the treatment effect is a same for everybody. The second need, the permutation inference was mainly focused on the sample inference. So it was concerned about whether there was a treatment effect within the sample, not for some, per, uh, some population. The Neyman's analysis explicitly allows random sampling from the population to make inferences about population, not, about, uh, not just about your sample. So unlike uh, Fisher's permutation analysis, uh, estimates are average streaming effect. It wasn't about the sharp null, it was about the average streaming effect. And it, it didn't have any restriction of how streaming effects may vary uh, from one unit to another. Okay. We didn't have to make that assumption in order to obtain the point estimate and biasness and the conservative variance. Uh, in the case of some average streaming effect. In the population, case of population average streaming effect, even under heterogeneous streaming effects, we can obtain the unbiased estimate of the variance. Um, and we can do both population and sample inference. Uh, like Fisher, though, we had to resort to the asymptotic approximation when we are constructing confidence intervals. We couldn't do the exact confidence intervals. We had to, so the p-values will also be asymptotically approximate um, p-values. So, the, so there's a no free lunch. Um, so there's a cost of allowing for heterogeneity and focusing on average stream impact as opposed to um, doing conducting the shop now hypothesis and then inverting it. This difference um, came up in the Royal Statistical Society meeting when Neyman was presenting his research and Fisher was discussing. And so this um, used to be in conferences, they would, uh, uh, the journal would um, transcribe some of the discussions and here's some uh, quote from that discussion. So Neyman says, so long as the average yields of any treatments are identical, the question as to whether these treatments affect separate yields on single plots seem to be uninteresting. So Neyman's saying, uh, we care about the average stream effect, not the effect, uh, no necessary effect about each uh, separate uh, units. Fisher says it may be foolish, but that is what the Z-test uh, was designed for, and the only purpose for which it has been used. Uh, Neyman says, I am considering problems which are important from the point of view 
of agriculture, which was the application that he was uh, talking about. Fischer says it may be that uh, the question which Dr. Neyman thinks should be answered is more important than the one I have proposed and attempted to answer. I suggest that before criticizing previous work, it is always wise to give enough study to the subject to understand its purpose. So it sort of led to this heated uh, discussion between Fisher and Neyman about their uh, different approaches to this causal inference. 